In this episode of Purposely Curious, Salvador Bentolila from The Finance Savior joins us as we discuss some much needed travel money hacks. Traveling can be so much fun, but can also be very expensive. So it's important to plan ahead and try some money saving hacks to get the most out of your travel experiences. So get that travel bag ready and get nice and cozy as this episode starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Purposely Curious. Today, I have our finance savior, Salvador. How are you? Hello, Marie. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing great. Uh, very happy to be with you, I think, for, for the third time recording uh, another episode and uh, very excited for the topic we're going to dis- discuss today. How have you been? I've been good. I've been good. So I actually reached out to Salvador because I get a lot of questions about travel and how do I travel as much as I do. And so, you know, it it does take a lot of money, but there's a lot of travel money hacks that people use and that we could do. So I thought we would, it would be good to have an episode about travel money hacks. So that's why I've asked Salvador to come back. So thank you for joining us. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining, too. And, and I think that the topic comes comes very, very timely, especially because I, I, I returned from, from traveling recently. And, and I can totally understand that why, um, why this is uh, uh, something uh, common and, and a question people want to know. When, when you travel, I think it's very easy, you know, the, the I guess the way I see, I like to see personal finances is that uh, budget is one of the uh, foundations of it, the, 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 the pillars, the first things that you do, and then you build off, you start building off of that. And the same goes with traveling. Um, it really starts with your budgeting. And what happens with traveling is that because you're going on a, to a new place that there's so many unknowns for you and it's hard to build up budget, right? Where you, in the place that you live, uh, you, you know how much things cost, but when you're traveling somewhere else, it, it's, it's harder to find that. Uh, things can go a little bit different to according, according to your plan, and that may lead to, uh, to unexpected expenses. So at least from my experience, really the key in, in, uh, in budgeting for, or really sticking to your budget when you're traveling has been trying to do as much research as possible on the front end before you travel so that you, that you can get really accurate numbers in terms of how much your expenses are going to be. What about uh, you, Marie? How, how do you handle, and, and we can expand on, on this before. I'm just curious if, if that if you have a different way in, in the, um, for, for you to handle your, your trips. Uh, no, so definitely budgeting. So I have an account that is specifically for travels where I save money. Um, okay. So I guess you can call it that's like my travel account. So it's every check I put money in there. Um, but it comes down to what Salvador said. It's just budget. you want to set a budget, right? Especially depending on where you're going, because some countries are more expensive than others. But uh, planning ahead is very, very crucial. um, So that you have an itinerary every day. And then that alone, if you buy tickets in advance, right, for certain museums or for certain tours, you know, it it really, really saves you a lot of money. So I definitely go and use exactly what you're saying, which is, you know, budgeting and planning ahead, doing research, comparing prices uh what days are cheaper than others right so yeah i definitely do all of that yeah yeah absolutely and and that go, goes hand in hand with with planning too with having a really well defined plan of of what you're gonna do at each uh time of the day and, and each day of your of your trip maybe you break down your day in 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 two you know the the morning and uh and then the, the evening and, and, and really plan what you're going to do because then you're able to break down a lot better uh, your, your activities and, and know how much each of those activities is going to cost you. So you first, I think, if you want to start that um, in, terms of, in terms of steps for, for making sure that your next trip 
really sticks to your budget. But the first one is doing what, what Marie does, right? Having a, a, a separate account where you start putting money aside, aside every month, ideally through a recurring transaction that you can easily set up from your checking account to your savings account. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously making sure that before you, you, you can pay for your, 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 all your bills and your needs and, and rent and, and then prioritize your, your, your savings, uh, your, your, sorry, your savings for your trip. And, and once you have that, then, okay, now you have the money that you think it's going to be more or less sufficient for your trip. Start uh, building your plan. That would be step two. And then once you have your plan, start doing the research for um, making sure you can allocate at least or know how much uh, each of those things is going to cost you. That would, that would be, that would be step three. And yeah. And then I think the combination of that is going to be really, really, really key. Um, is that more or less how you see it, uh, Marie, or do you have any other steps to add? No, that's really kind of like the steps. Um, cause then from those, that being the main steps, right at that point, when you, that's when the planning comes in and you really have to, the little bits come in. So usually what I do is once I figure out, you know, I have the days my job has given me approval. That's when I book the flight, which is usually the first thing I do. Yeah, uh, I look, book the flight and try to, you know, if you can try to go during travel off season because things tend to be cheaper. Um, yeah. The sooner you book the flights, chances are the cheaper it's going to be. Um, also, they say to try to book them like somewhere in the middle of the week um, if you can. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, I, I don't know if that's usually where I start once I have like the money allocated for my travels. Um, how about yourself? Yeah, likewise. And actually, there's also uh, now with the tools like, like Google Flights, for example, you can easily track a flight once you select a, a route, then you're able to you don't have to purchase it right away and you can see how the price changes for um, during, during a time period until you decide, okay, if it goes down this much, then I'm going to buy it. If it, uh, or I'm going to wait, uh, to make sure that, that it's an affordable price. So that, that's a really cool tool. Some airlines also now have a 24 hour free cancellation. Let's say you book your flight and you're not entirely sure, or then you change your mind or you just want to wait to see if, uh, something else, another, a cheaper rate, uh, opens up in the next day. You, you can do that and you get a, a free, uh, uh, sorry, a penalty free, uh, full, full refund. So that's something I actually do a lot when let's say I, I might have a plan to travel, but I'm not entirely sure yet. And, and when I go online, the rates are, are, are low or cheaper than what I expected. So I do that and try to finalize my plan in the next 24 hours. So that that that's a real good tool another one is um making use of your carry-on uh, luggage the airlines have now started to charge for for um check check bags something mm -hmm. that that wasn't so common before especially in in domestic even international flights uh, and they're not included now so making the most uh making the most out of your carry-on space i think in uh, checking in a bag, I think it's thirty around thirty five dollars for some airlines each way. So you know, if you're traveling two people, that's one hundred and forty dollars extra that you're gonna add to your trip. And if you can save that just by uh, maybe uh, uh, washing your clothes more frequently, that that's something that can that can help. So that's kind of a little hack. Do you have any any other hacks, money for traveling? Um. Well, when I went to Paris, they charged fifty dollars for. The carry on um, this last month, and oh, well. usually because I wanted to do some shopping, what I did was I brought uh, I have like this uh, travel carry on bag that I would take that I've taken where I can squeeze a lot of stuff because it has a lot of compartments. Okay. Um. So I did take that, but I took that one empty, and when I came back, I put all my dirty clothes in that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and that way i had a lot of space in my luggage for all the stuff i was buying um, right, right. so that was one of the things i did um it, it, to me it was just i that way i didn't have to i felt like i had i didn't have to 
not spend as much or bring stuff back as much because I had that extra bag that carry on. Um, yeah. So I did save money in that sense. Yeah, that 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 um, completely made sense. And actually, t- when talking more on on the on how to save is by trying to avoid changing the currency at the airport. That's something yes. nowadays is is less common because we use a lot credit cards. And so, if you're using cash, try to avoid changing the currency uh, at the airport because usually the rates are, are more expensive to use. So mm-hmm. just have a little mm-hmm. bit for the, the taxi or public transportation to get to your hotel or the city center and then uh, change currency there. If you are using credit cards, then just you just need to make sure that the credit card you have doesn't charge for uh, a fee when you do an international transaction or an international payment. Mm-hmm. And, and that and that those usually those fees are, are can be like two or three percent so they can add up pretty quickly and if you have a credit card that doesn't have that uh, they usually come with an annual fee but um, I, I think most of the times it pays off and and by the way you can even take further advantage of the credit cards let's say you know you're you're traveling in we're right now in September let's say you know, you're traveling in, in March or in, in April for spring break, let's say. And you can look at what uh, credit cards right now are offering the highest sign uh, sign-in bonus or sign-up bonuses. And those usually just require you to spend a certain amount of time within the first three months of when you open it. And so, and then they give you this huge sign-up bonus that you can use to buy your ticket. And so basically you just, that that's, that and accommodation are the two largest expenses of, of any trip, I think, in my experience. So if you can save, if you can buy your tickets with points, that that reduces your your trip budget very, very mm-hmm. significantly. So that, that's another travel hack. Um, right now, I can I, I know for sure that the Chase Sapphire uh, preferred card uh, has a... Um, a sign up, an increased sign up bonus of 100,000 points, which is equivalent to about uh, $1,250 if you use them through their, their portal. So uh, the, the credit card costs $95 a year, which is not significant considering the, the bonus that they're giving you. And I think you have to spend somewhere between three and $5,000 between the first three months. So I, I, I know that sometimes spending that amount of money can be a little bit of a challenge but that that's one of the times where you can either if you have a, a, a large expense that you were already thinking about doing maybe buying a tv or a new piece of furniture or making another i don't know an insurance payment and even if you don't you can always ask for a relative that has to make one of those payments to use your card and then they pay you back and that way you hit that milestone and then you get you get your your sign up bonus. Yeah. So I definitely, when traveling, I was looking for a credit card and also okay. a bank that gave a z- zero, like very minimal to zero travel fees. So I was able to find that. So that okay. was, that's really nice. It's because you don't have to worry about, and I think the average is like, like you said, 3%, which yeah. can add up. So that's definitely something some people do use credit cards for points as well for future, uh, you know, transportation, like flights and everything. Um, the other thing, too, that I thought would be interesting to talk about is when you book a hotel or an Airbnb. So I prefer Airbnbs, if possible, or a hotel that has a small kitchen or uh, gives breakfast, continental breakfast. Um that way I don't have to worry about breakfast. So when I would make it to the city that I'm going, if it's an Airbnb, first thing we would do is like a grocery run. We go to the groceries and buy like snacks and like stuff for breakfast and coffee that's easy. So that way we were set for that. Um, I don't know if you've done that on your travels. Yeah, I, I, Cooking at, 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 the, at the hotel, if I can, or at the apartment I rent, it's also something that I, that I try to do as much as possible because eating out um, can, can add to, to your expenses. And, and of course, to, to an extent, right? Because mm-hmm. sometimes, depending where you go, uh, 
eating out is part of the experience, part of the right. culture, and you wanna you don't wanna miss out on that too. So I think having a healthy balance there uh, is definitely definitely helpful. Yeah, yeah. Now, what do you think about transportation once we are at our destination? Yeah, so for transportation, that that's another uh, key thing where it comes it comes to planning. You're you're gonna be in an un- unknown place, um, a new transportation system. So uh, I think, and, and sometimes people may be um, shy to ask. Uh, it might be a different uh, language that it's being spoken in that. Uh, uh, city or maybe just because uh, you don't want to get in that situation so I think it's important just not to be afraid to ask or, or shy and, and if you need help with getting around in your public transportation um, definitely do it right now you know there's so many applications and, and online resources that you can use if you really don't want to are not the type of, of person that likes to, to ask uh, around that mm-hmm. you can download for free and use those to your advantage uh, to plan out the, the way you're going to get around in the city and avoid taking uh, a taxi, which, which again, is going to add up very quickly to, yeah. uh, to your budget. And so that, that, that's, that's pretty much. And <laughs> sometimes it, uh, you know, uh, as much as you plan, uh, sometimes it really, uh, you may miss the bus or unexpected mm-hmm. things happen and then you end up uh, taking a cab and, and it's fine, you know, if it's once in uh, once or twice in, in the trip. But I think the main point is to, uh, for most of them, to to make sure you know how the public transportation works and mm-hmm. and, and which uh, which alternatives work better for you. Yeah. So you definitely want to look at where you're where most of the places you want to go to are and try to get maybe a, lo- a, a hotel that's kind of localized in that area. Public yep. transportation is definitely cheapest. Obviously, if you can walk, you know, of course, walk. But uh, tr- public transportation is cheapest. And, you know, it was in when, when I was uh, at my trip last month, the apps are so advanced now. Like you say you want to go to point A to point B. It literally tells you which trains to take. So it's definitely a lot easier than it was maybe 10 years ago. Um, so you have oh, that yeah. benefit. Um the, which brings me to we were talking about apps, right? You, yeah. we all of us rely on our phones, our cell phones now. So cellular data can be very expensive when you go to another country. So you should try to sort out what plans of international plans your carrier has, um, or you can buy a SIM card for that country, um, which is cheaper as well. Um, I don't know if you have other advice on that. Yeah, I, I, I do the same, and I I actually use T-Mobile, uh, a T-Mobile family plan that that it has roaming services for for its cover for many countries. So that that gives you internet and I think free text messages too. So it's a little bit slower because you're connecting to the, to a network of that place, depending on, on where you are, maybe faster or slower. But in general, it it really really saves you because uh, with the internet, you know, you can use Google Maps and get around with the public transportation or just browse online or, or WhatsApp calling if you need to call mm-hmm. um, uh, to your back to your, to your country um, or even just local numbers. So um, that, that's key. And, and, and really what's important there is just to check in advance because uh, otherwise roaming fees can be really, really expensive and you don't want to get uh, a yeah. surprise still when you're back. Yeah, they can be really, really expensive, guys. The other thing too is what I do is um, I literally have my phone on airplane mode when I'm out, you know, with the groups and stuff and doing the day activities. I usually tell my mom because my mom, ne- my, I'm a mommy's girl. My mom needs to hear from me. So I always tell her I'm going to call you at this time when I'm in the hotel. Most places have Wi-Fi, you know, so I'll use Facebook Messenger, you know, anything to save from data being used. So as you guys know, all of our phones have applications. If you look at all the applications, they're usually using data all the time. So I literally turn off the cellular data on every single app except the ones that I know I'm going to use. That way I know that it's not just, you know, they search locations and without without us knowing. 
So that can also make your data usage go up quickly. So I always turn the data on all the apps off, except the ones that I'm going to probably use, like Google Maps and so on. Um, so that I've, I, that's personally what I do. And then I just post whatever I'm going to post on my stories when I'm back on Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and, and on that point, too, of, of the Wi-Fi and, and Internet, and you can also use the apps to to kind of get get yourself around the city more that more more than in terms of transportation in terms of the different attractions that that there are there and and maybe even avoid uh having to pay for a for a tour guide you know, mm-hmm. or or entrance fees to different places maybe there's some free attractions or uh, public attractions that you can uh you can go to and and find out while while using online websites or applications that help you get around the city so that's another helpful resource too. Yeah. And you, I just remembered one thing. If the city is relatively small and all the tourist things are kind of close, uh, when I went to Paris for the first time, maybe like six, seven years ago, I don't remember. You know, like those uh, uh, tourist double-decker buses? Yeah. Yeah. So what we did was we paid like $40 for two days unlimited hopping on and off. So literally, okay. we would just hop on the bus. It would take us to the next tourist destination. We would get off, spend however long we wanted to be there. Then we would hop on again. And it was 40. I thought that was cheap. We only did it for two days, but it got us to all the tourist sites. So I always tell people, if you're going to certain cities that have those, take advantage of it for one or two days. Um, because it, 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 I'm sure it's more expensive now, but it, I think it was like $40. And so I thought it was worth the money at the time. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a great way to, to get around the city and see a lot of things in, in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when yeah. you travel, do you okay. do uh, group tours yourself? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I, I think depending on the tour unless it really needs to be like a personal experience which i think most of the times it doesn't need to then i'm fine with with uh with groups and it's a good way also to get to know uh new people and and connect and network so yeah what about you so i do like certain group tours now when i say group tours it's like the ones that you do for a day um, so, oh, okay. yeah, so I enjoy those because I like the history. I like being told the historical stuff of it. So they usually will pick you up in the morning, do transportation for you, right? From the hotel, take you to like, when we went to like Cancun, we went to all the pyramids and, you know, it took us through the cenotes and all that. And they give you the historical aspects of it, but then they also, they take, you don't have to wait in line because they already have like that tour access. So it would, it, they kind of facilitated that day trip, if that makes any sense. And then they usually provide lunch and then they drop you off back at the hotel. So for me, I, I feel like that's worth the money because it's, uh, I like to hear all the, you know, educational aspects. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's probably a good, uh, it, probably they have a good price to value um, a ratio in terms of what you get. You say you also get, you get food. So um, probably get a lot for your big bag for you from for your uh, money there. It's been a while since I do those kind of trips, but <laughs> I can see how they can be valuable. Yeah, and another thing too is if you guys go to like a lot of these websites like TripAdvisor or there's a, a lot of websites that there a lot of people are very nice on leaving reviews, and you can find itineraries of things that are free and beautiful in these cities that you may not have known otherwise right because everyone goes to this all the busy tourist spots but a lot of these websites can can show you pictures and kind of let they'll let you know their experience of things that are for free that you know they didn't know was there until they got there so i definitely would say check those websites because there's probably a lot of free stuff you can do yeah totally totally agree with that right now really with internet there's there's so many resources up to a point that sometimes it can become even overwhelming and confusing with so many different uh, websites available. But um, I think for the most part, you can really use it to your advantage and plan plan as best as possible your trip. Mm-hmm. Do you have any more money hacks for traveling? 
I think those are the general ones that that come to mind. I'm sure the more, I'm sure there's more. And yeah. for the audience, I believe it's a great start, and and I'm always happy to to uh, chat more about any if, if any of uh, the people in the audience want to hear more about a specific hack or or a new one that they've used and would like us to to hear our thoughts on it. And definitely, please let us know via uh, the comment sections or by reaching out to. Um, Maria or, or my, Marie, sorry, or myself. And, Maria is uh, fine. <laughs> oh, well, okay, great. <laughs> so, and, and yeah, we'll definitely, um, we'll definitely circle back and, and chat more about those. Yeah. So feel free to share your travel hacks, guys, your money travel hacks. We, it, I'm sure Salvador and I would love anything new to help us save money. We're down for it. Um, and how can they reach you, Salvador? Yeah, so to me, I have an Instagram uh, page. It's called The Finance Savior, at The Finance Savior. And uh, either uh, by, I, I try to post on a daily basis on different hacks on, on personal finance in general. So either dropping a comment on any of the posts, if you have a question relevant to those, or or just by sending me a, a private message through, through that website. Um, I usually try to respond as quickly as possible. Perfect. Well, thank you again for joining me, Salvador, and I hope to talk to you soon. Yes, likewise. It's been a pleasure and I uh, look forward to hear from your from the audience too. Yes. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Yes. Bye. That was episode 72 of the Purposely Curious podcast. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on most podcast platforms. And follow us on social media at Purposely Curious on Instagram and at Purposely C Pod on Twitter. That's Purposely, the letter C, pod. Until next time, you know what to do.